Hello, and welcome to the Fit News Podcast. I am your host, Jen Shaver, and joining me today is a very special guest, Karen Bush. Karen is one of the first board-certified functional medicine health coaches in the country. She has training from the Cleveland Clinic Center for Functional Medicine and Duke University, which have paved the way for her to help her clients. Whether you want to gain energy, lose weight, manage stress, or reverse certain health issues, making a health, healthy lifestyle changes can often leave you feeling vulnerable and overwhelmed. Karen partners with her clients to discover the barriers, navigate the complexity, and develop the habits that lead to optimal health and wellness. She helps her clients with personalized approach so they can gain support as they shift their mindset and behaviors in small yet significant ways to achieve their vision of optimal health and wellness. Karen, thank you for joining me today. Well, thanks for asking me, Jen. This is fun. Yeah, I'm excited to chat. Why don't we just get started with how did you, like what initially inspired you to pursue a career in the functional medicine health coaching area? Uh, so I, I spent lots of years working in conventional medicine as a medical speech pathologist with adults in the hospitals. And so I was very familiar with the traditional model of healthcare and I loved it for many years, but I also got a little burned out mm -hmm. and I started to feel like maybe I wasn't helping people as much as I could. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be on the other side of it. Right. So I worked with a lot of people who had been sick for years and then had strokes or heart attacks or dementia, all of those sort of chronic diseases and end stage type things. And I thought, you know, I'd like to be on the other end of it and help people not get to that place. Mm -hmm. Preventative, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. And, and I'd always kind of thought about my own health. Um, mm -hmm. My father had his first heart attack at 36. And so I always wow. thought when I used to think that genetics were more of an issue than they are, mm -hmm. that I did not win the genetic lottery. <laughs> All my uncles had heart disease and I thought, oh, I better do something about this. And, yeah. you know, working in healthcare, it was just right in front of me. So mm -hmm. I knew that, that there were things that I could do to pay attention to that. So the combination of working in conventional medicine and then also knowing that, you know, there are potential things in my family that I needed to kind of move away from, health and wellness was always an interest of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, and then I, I, as I said, I got a little burned out as a speech therapist, wasn't sure what I wanted to do for a while. And then a friend of mine posted something about going to Duke University for their health coach training program. And I thought, that's brilliant. Why didn't yeah. I think that? Before? <laughs> so I looked into it and I did it. Um, yeah. It was a really great program. I loved it. Um, it was at the Center for Integrative Medicine at Duke University. Wow. An integrative medicine program. Um, and, and that sort of started the ball rolling. I didn't know what to do with it when I first finished. Yeah. And frankly, I was sort of like, oh, during the headlights. Okay, I love this, but I don't know how to do it. Um, and then an opportunity to work at the Center for Functional Medicine here in Cleveland mm -hmm. was presented. So I took that position, worked yeah. there for just short of two years. And that felt like another master's degree. I just <laughs> learned so much. And so the functional medicine piece kind of came into the health and wellness piece of it. And as you know, functional medicine is, is a root cause kind of medicine, right? Thinking yeah. about yeah. how did I get where I am, right? right? Right. It really looks at fixing the problem and not just throwing a Band-Aid over the problem exactly. to mask the problem. Exactly. Exactly. And so for many years, I thought, as most of us thought, you know, nutrition and physical mm -hmm. fitness and exercise, those are the things that are going to keep me healthy. Right? right. And of course they are, they're very important yet. Yet there are boundaries around those things. And there are lots of other things like sleep and stress and all those things mm -hmm. that I never really thought about until I really got into learning about the holistic way of looking at health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It really is, um, you know, a, a holistic approach because we might fix one aspect, right? And we might be doing really well with our nutrition, but we might still be having 
some areas of problems, right? I mean, we might still be having, you know, difficulty with something and, you know, maybe we are trying to lose weight and, you know, Karen, I'm doing all the things. I'm eating everything you told me to eat, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. I'm sure you've heard that a million times. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially as we get older and particularly with women, I mean, women tend to come I'll speak more about women, mostly because mm -hmm. women tend to come to functional medicine or a health coach well more than men do. They right. come sometimes because their wives bring them. And there's the occasional man who really is interested in it, but it's mostly yeah. women. Certainly, you know, there's a lot of women now and there's so many other things that impact it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, it's the weight loss when you get into your older age and, mm -hmm. you know, you're past 40 and you're getting into your fifties and, you're doing the same things. And all of a sudden there's this weight that you never had before. And you're, you're thinking, well, I'm not doing anything different than I did before, but that's probably the problem, right? Right. We don't pay attention to the fact that, you know, if we don't get good sleep, our insulin levels can rise, right? Blood sugar levels can rise. Um, stress is the other piece of the puzzle that I think, you know, I think when we spoke, that was the one thing mm -hmm. that I felt like maybe we could yeah. kind of talk about, because I think most women just minimize stress, yes. but we also are expected almost to minimize it, right? There's this expectation that we can handle anything. We can do everything. We can have, have all these things. And I think, I don't really believe that we can have all those things. I think we need to have some boundaries around certain things. Right. Right. And yeah. And I, I really do want to dive deeper into the stress component because so many women it's exactly like you said, they tend to minimize it, right? Just because um, they might not have time for it. They might not want to face it, right? Mm -hmm. They might not know how to face it or deal with it or or whatever. But I, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll be working with women. Oh yeah. You know, I have this, this, and this, but it's nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just think, well, let's address it. You know, let's not keep ignoring that yeah. elephant that's in the room because right we're not going to be able to move forward until you do that so you might be doing all the other steps that i am trying to help you with sure but that stress is such a large component let's talk some more about that because i know that so many women that is a huge area because of that stage of life right oh absolutely absolutely and i think you know what we don't always realize is that I think the statistics are somewhere around 90% of illness or health issues can be either related directly to stress or exacerbated by stress. 90%. That's a, that, that's, that's a huge number. I mean, we're not talking about just the itsy bitsy. <laughs> right. And as women, we're, we're very disconnected from our body from a stress perspective, yet we're hyper-focused on our body from a physical weight or appearance perspective, right? We don't, we sort of shove things off as, oh, that couldn't be stress. But I'll tell you the first time that I ever realized that was when I had a client as a speech therapist. Mm -hmm. I had a patient who came to me from neurology and ENT and they said, listen, this woman has significant speech deficits, yet we'd find nothing on her MRI or CT scan. She's had no stroke. She has no evidence of dementia. There is no correlate to why she is having these speech difficulties. And she literally could not put a sentence together. She could write a few things, but other than that, and she was lovely. She was a lovely woman. She could do everything else in her life. She could drive a car. She could wow. cook a, you know, three course dinner. Yet her husband had been incredibly abusive to her. He was abusive and then he developed dementia. And mm -hmm. It was the abuse and the emotional stress from living with someone all of her life who had had really sort of squashed her as a person. Right. And that's what happened. She developed a, a, a legitimate language issue where she just couldn't speak. That was the first time I had ever seen that. Wow. That, whoa. Okay. Yeah. This is serious, right? Yeah. And so there are lots of other like examples of things that happen in our lives that we sort of push off. Now, not everything is stress. I don't want to say that. Right. But I think that in our society, we have a lot more going on that's stress related. So, so sometimes people who don't get sick at all or who get sick too often, it's like this imbalance of the immune system, loss of sex drive, loss of hair, because 
you know, the cortisol, which is our stress hormone impacts all of our other hormones. Mm -hmm. We can see thyroid disorders. We can see all kinds of, um, sexual dysfunction. Um, we can see constipation. We can see people who can't focus or we are klutzy and we fall all the time and we forget things. Those are all like stress sort of related things, premature graying of the hair. Wow. That can also be a stress thing. Um, and we talked about the blood sugar part of it, but there's all these other things. People always think stress just means I have anxiety or I'm like, you know, shaking or something like that. That's not really the only thing, right? Right. right. Um, and chronic insomnia or when it gets to a really end stage, it is like a chronic insomnia thing, but even just little sleep disturbances can be because of stress. So I think, you know, once we know that, mm -hmm. then we can kind of say, okay, let me pay attention to this a little bit. And what can I do? And as you mentioned in my, my bio or the intro, it can be about these tiny tweaks. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a big thing. Right. Right. I mean, you know, when we talk about, like, I, we can't just talk about all the issues, right? And that stress is present, because then that's sort of like creating anxiety. And you're like, oh, gosh, I'm going to get sick from this. <laughs> no, you can do something about it, right. right? And I think one of the things that I tend to work with a lot of women who are high achieving, they have, you know, families, they have busy um, work situations, maybe they're, they own their own business or they're an executive or, um, you know, any number of things, right. They've got lots of things going on. And I think there are little things you can embed in the day. You don't mm -hmm. have to spend three hours on self-care. Right. And in fact, it's not necessarily just about meditation or breath work or any of those things. Those can be like checking the boxes and I do it, but I don't really change what's going on inside my body. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's a great point that you bring up, you know, whenever we do something without intention or the only intention is to check off the box, are we really getting the benefits from that? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not really, because I've had so many people that I've worked with who will tell me, well, I meditate and I do this breath work and I do my sauna and I do this and I do that. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like you're probably stressing yourself out by doing all those things. Right. Right? You're just adding to your stress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're trying to do all the things to kind mm -hmm. of get away from the stress, yet you're adding to it. Yeah. Oftentimes it's really shifting of the mindset, right? How do I respond to stressors? And do I step back a little bit and allow myself some time to choose intentionally how I respond to something. Mm -hmm. That's hard. It doesn't come overnight. Right. But that's some of the stuff that I work on with people, right? It's mm -hmm. okay. How can I quiet that down a little bit, create a little space, ground myself, calm myself, and then decide how I want to respond to this. It's also about decluttering your life, right? Maybe you say no to <clears throat> excuse me, Ooh. maybe you say no to something, not because you have something planned, because you just want to stay home. Right. And creating those boundaries, like, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Setting boundaries around what you're going to say yes to and, and living based on your values and in alignment with the things that are important to you. Mm -hmm. Putting your kids, I had one client tell me, I went to 10 soccer games this weekend. And I thought, oh my gosh, do you want to do, do you hear that thunder? <laughs> Crazy. Do you want to go to 10 soccer games and do your kids want to go to 10 soccer games? Maybe they do. And maybe yeah. if that's their thing and they love it, you're going to do it. But there also has to just be balance. And so right. that's kind of what we talk about. It's mm -hmm. like, how can we create balance with that? Right. And you, you work with people on exercise, right? It mm -hmm. can't be all intense exercise every single day. Right. 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 I mean, that's just, it, again, it goes back to that holistic approach and finding that balance in all that we do, right? Whether it's in our nutrition, right? Because we know that, you know, if you go and you say, well, I'm never eating this, 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 and this, and this again, well, a few months down the road, when you do come upon that, right? You end up binging on that. I yeah. mean, it, 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 so it, it's, it's, again, it, everything comes down to the balance. It does. It does. It does. And I, our lives and our bodies and nature likes balance, right? Yeah. 
So when we don't have enough rain, like we're getting now, yeah. everything is out and nothing grows. So we need the rain, we need the sun, we need all of those things. And our bodies need that, that homeostasis, that balance. Mm -hmm. That is such a perfect analogy that I think anyone listening, that should just be the, the light bulb moment. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I get it now. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Cause that, that, that's it. You know, cause if it, if it rained for 40 days, we all know what happens. Right? <laughs> right. Build well, that, that arc again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and so I think it is hard sometimes for people to create balance for themselves mm -hmm. because we, we often feel like we're being, you know, it's, I don't have control over my life. Right. Mm -hmm. I got to go to work. My kids have to do these things, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. But there are little ways to embed things into your day. And so some of the little tweaks that I talk to people about are little breath practices, right? Mm -hmm. There's like the physiological side where you take a breath in, a little extra breath, and then a longer exhale. You can do that anywhere, right? right. Yeah. When you're in the car picking your kids up, right? In the <laughs> in car, that pickup you know, line that right. goes on and on. <laughs> Right, Which is right. probably when you need it the most. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, there's also an app called uh, Insight Timer. Yes, I love that you. one. Yes. And yes. So they, have, they have the timer part of it where there's all these different sounds. Mm -hmm. And I often like, especially in the morning when I'm driving downtown at, you know, 6 a.m. to go row, I put on the ohms. So there's like this one that's layered sounds of oh. ohms. It was like chanting. Yeah. It's so calming. And yeah. I just have to hear it and my whole body just goes like limp. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh. No, that is a great app because it there while there is a paid, you know, you can do paid stuff on there. A lot of the stuff on there is free. It is. And I, I anytime, you know, I'm talking about stress with somebody, I say, you need to try insight timer. <laughs> and I, I'm not getting anything from them, you know. Right, right. We're not affiliates for insight time. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, not at all. We just want to let other people know about, you know, what a great free app and tool it is. It is, it is. And it's it's, you know, there's so many different sounds. And if sounds aren't your thing, I also tell people, you know, visualize a happy place. Like if you're at work and you're on the computer all the time and you're getting stressed, pull up a picture of some place that's really calming mm -hmm. and where you feel like you're happiest, right? Yeah. So yeah. maybe it's a vacation, maybe it's your front porch, maybe it's your back deck. I don't know what it is, but but that's also an opportunity within your day that doesn't take any real extra time. You're not spending 30 minutes looking at a picture of the ocean. Right. But it call and if you really get mindful and you're connected to that in that moment, it can calm you down. Yeah. It can bring that balance, right? Our autonomic nervous system with the rest and digest and fight or flight is a, a system that that is robust, right? Yeah. We don't want to be in one or the other all the time, but we want a good balance between right. it. Right. And that's the thing that helps calm that internal stress monitor. Yeah. You know, now that you bring up, you know, that balance with the stress, let's talk about stress as in, you know, not all stress is bad, right? Exactly. Yeah. So there are, there are good stressors, right? right. And I think um, Dr. Ali Crum out of Stanford University has done a lot of good research around stress as an enhancing mindset. Mm -hmm. So an example of that would be she says, you know, you don't worry about Johnny's grades, you know, and, and him getting good grades at school, unless Johnny's your son and you care about him and you want him to do well. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you have a stressor that is connected to a value and in alignment with who you are, then it can be, you know, looked at as a good stressor, right? I'm worried about this, but I'm not going to stay in this worry place. I'm going to move forward and I'm going to create something that helps me get past that. And, you know, maybe I'm going to help him with his homework, or I'm going to set up a schedule for X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. Right. So stress can be a good thing because it motivates you to do something. Right. And you stress is what they call good stress, right. Mm -hmm. Versus distress, which is the unhealthy stress. Mm -hmm. That's where you're ruminating or anxious about something. And you, you're really not solving it. You're just talking, talking, talking. This is one of the things that happens when people watch the news too much yeah, yeah. where they just go over all the, I mean, there's a lot of 
not so great stuff going on in our world right now. Right. And we could go over and over and over it, yet that's not going to help you. It's only going to increase your stress. Try to do something physical around it, right? right. So how can you do something that really calms that down? But there right. are good stressors and they are motivations for movement. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's just it. It's especially in this climate that we have, you know, right now, if you are waking up and you're turning the news on and the news is on all day and you have it on at night and you have it on right before bed, what type of environment are you creating Mm -hmm. for yourself? Right. Yeah, exactly. One of the things we talk about often with my clients is you know, limit the amount of time that you're, you're watching the news. Mm -hmm. I, I actually have quite a few clients that are in the Middle East, so they have a significant amount of stress right now, right? There's a lot going on there. And some of them feel as though they're, they're not um, paying attention or participating, or they know people who are in that region. And if they don't pay attention to it and watch it constantly, then they feel guilt around Mm -hmm. it. So we've had to kind of talk around, okay, so is that really, but is that giving them something? Is that doing something for you? Right. It's, it's not doing something for you. So maybe shutting it off or, or setting a certain time limit on how much you're going to watch. Mm-hmm. Stay connected to it, but you don't have to watch it 24 seven. You don't have to wake up with your phone, put your phone right. aside. Maybe don't pick it up for the first hour of the day. You can still connect to that stuff, but you don't have to do it all the time. Right. right. I, what, and again, we're going back to boundaries, right? Boundaries, <laughs> boundaries and balance, right? Yes, B and B. B. <laughs> <laughs> and Very important. It all comes back to boundaries and balance. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I just think, I, I always think that balance is just one of the most important things in our lives, no matter what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Right? Talk about nutrition and nutrition can also be a stressor for you. If you're not eating the foods that are healthy for your gut, like you're eating too much sugar that can raise your anxiety and your stress. So that's why it's this holistic thing. Like if we don't sleep well, if we don't eat well, if we don't move our bodies a little bit, if we don't Mm -hmm. do something to get rid of the energy of that stress, if we don't pay attention to our environment and toxins, those are all things that contribute to that level of stress. Right. Right. And, you know, again, it goes back to just because we take care of one thing, if if not all the cogs in the wheel, right, are working together, mm-hmm. then the wheel's not, the big wheel won't turn, so. Exactly. For example, if we are eating in a stressed state, mm-hmm. what ends up happening from an evolutionary perspective is we don't produce the digestive enzymes and the acids we need to break down the food, absorb mm-hmm. the nutrients, and use that food as fuel. Mm-hmm eating in a stressed state, we could be eating the best diet in the world and we're not utilizing it in the best way. Yeah. Calming yourself down, taking, you know, not trying not to eat in the car or eating at the counter 10 minutes before you're trying to run into a meeting. I know sometimes that happens. It isn't always allowable, but if you could set aside 15 or 20 minutes and just calmly try to eat a meal, your gut is going to feel better. You're going to be slowing it down and you're going to actually realize that it's, it's nutritionally better for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just heard a a quote that the other day that I just thought that's it. That's, that's it right there. And it was, it's not just what you eat. It's what you absorb. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, wow. Yeah, exactly. Because again, you could be eating all of the right fruits and vegetables and protein sources and this, that, and the other. But if you aren't absorbing yeah, the nutrients from those foods, because, you know, you are experiencing gut issues that goes back to stress, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It all leads back there. Yeah. yeah. And it's, so I think you've probably seen some people who you thought, wow, that person is such a healthy person. They exercise, they eat well, they do all these things how did that person get sick, right? In functional medicine, we know that there is a pathway to that. And often it can be the stress piece, the the sleep issue. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest, um, one of the best examples of this was during the pandemic, when the women's US rowing team, they all got COVID and it took them 
so many months to get over it. Like it, they, they were probably, you would think the most healthy people, right? They exercised right. The Olympic yeah. athletes, but it probably was because they were exercising so intensely. They had high cortisol levels, high stress yeah. levels, maybe not, you know, absorbing the nutrients from the great foods that they were potentially eating. Mm-hmm. And so oftentimes you can look at people and think, oh, they, they should be really healthy, but there's all these other areas that you have to pay attention to. Right. Right. Now I know that you help your clients, you know, to overcome the barriers that they are facing. What are some common ones that you kind of help them navigate through? Time. Yeah. People always say, I don't think I have time for this. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so that's where the tiny tweaks come in, right? Yeah. Um, Maybe you put a yoga mat in your office and you do 10 minutes of yoga, you know, before you eat or in the mm-hmm. morning or so it's, it's off often time. And then thinking that they have to be all or nothing. And see, and, and so that's what I was just gonna say. So that really is more of a mindset shift that you're helping them make because we have to get away from this idea that a exercise has to happen at the gym or in a class or, you know, something, you know, like that. And it has to be an hour, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I tell, I've had people laugh at me when I say, well, why don't you just go down on the treadmill for like 10 minutes? And they're like, well, how's that going to help me? And, right. and I say, well, how much are you doing now? Right. And they're like, nothing. Okay. Well, 10 minutes is more than nothing. And right. if you do it twice in a day, then you've got 20 minutes and you do it four times in the week. That's, you know, 80 minutes of exercise. Yeah more than you were doing before. Yeah. So it is time constraints. It's mindset shift. Yeah. And when people start to do these little things, they realize, wow, okay, I actually do feel a little bit different. I have more energy Mm -hmm. towards the end of the day. You know, like at three o'clock in the afternoon, when I have that slump, rather than reaching for a cup of coffee or something that's going to give me exogenous energy, Mm -hmm. I create it from inside by going and jumping on my trampoline or doing a jump rope or just going for a walk. Right. Yeah. Get outside. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really is like these tiny little things. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing. It's the all or nothing thinking is, is so detrimental to people. Yeah. It's, it's, it takes time to work back from that. So we do it in small steps, but you know, people always want to go to this, oh, but I got to do the intense. I got to do the intense workout. I have to restrict my calories, you know, to that of a bird and right. <laughs> you know and they and they're doing great right for three weeks sure sure i mean if not- it were so great you'd be doing it the rest of your life but it's not so great <laughs> not sustainable right yeah. yeah and then you're also creating more stress for yourself so right that, like keeps you on that treadmill of things not getting better yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so i think those are the time constraints and um you know, I had somebody the other day who's like, ah, you know, I don't know if I have time to prep, but they have like a 14 year old daughter. And I said, oh, great. Why don't you get your 14 year old daughter to help you in the kitchen? She can learn some recipes. Like maybe you give her an allowance for it. She preps some food on a Sunday. She's like, oh, that's brilliant. Like she would actually like that and it right. would help me out. I'm like, right. yeah. And it would help her daughter because you're teaching her these life skills totally. that, you know, are, are you know, invaluable so yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so it's it's those kinds of things and that's how it's very personalized right when Mm -hmm. I work with someone it's not you know I have a framework in my mind of the things that I think we probably should address right but it's a partnering it's a personalized thing it's how do you think you might be able to do this coaching is really more about asking the questions and Mm -hmm. people tell you like I'm not going to just have somebody and say well you need to start meditating I will say So, you know, there's some stress that you've told me is in your life. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you have thought about to try to address that? Yeah. And they'll say, either they'll say, nope, I have no idea. Or they'll say, well, you know, I've always thought about meditation and I tried it once and I don't think I was very good at it. And I said, well, do you think you would like to do it again? Sure. I'd like to try it again. So then we start to work on, you know, I, I ask them permission for this stuff, right? I'm right. not just the top down, here's what you should be doing and I'm going to give you a protocol and that's it. Yeah. Um, 
because that won't work. Because no, because that could create more stress. Right. You no, know, it, it's not about creating more stress. Yeah. 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 So it's it's usually working, meeting a person where they are mm-hmm. and helping them to get where they want to go. When they've reached out to me, they've already decided that they want to do something different. Right. Right. So that's that's the good part about functional medicine. It's that people seek it out because they know that they're ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's we are so lucky to have providers now that are knowledgeable in it and that, you know, are out there and ready and willing to help people because it's such a great field to mm-hmm. want to learn why yes. you're having this problem, you know, not right. just, Hey, you have Hashimoto's <laughs> Take <Yeah>. these pills. <laughs> right. Right. How did that happen? Well, <laughs> no. talk about that. Yeah. 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 And, and I do get some people who just say, you know, I don't necessarily want to learn the research and, and understand like all the information behind it. I kind of just want to, you know, give me a plan. Let me, let me mm-hmm. do the things. And I'm okay with that, but I slip in the whole, because it's important for people to know the why, why you're doing this. It won't be sustainable if you don't know why. Right. Right. Exactly. So Karen, if people want to uh, work with you or find more about you, where can they do that at? Uh, my website, which is karenbush.com. So B-U-S-H, no C in there. Um, I'm also on Instagram as Coach K. Bush. Um, I have a Facebook page. Uh, Full Capacity Living is really sort of the um, the mantra of what I do as a coach. And I also have a podcast called Full mm-hmm. Capacity Living. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of ways that people can kind of connect with me and mm-hmm. um you know, I make time for complimentary discovery calls if people want to talk to me and see if we're a good fit because yeah. not a good fit for everyone, but, right. you know, I, I offer that up so that people can kind of see this works for them. Right, right. Yeah, and I, and I think that that's, you know, something that's important. You know, people are always asking me, well, why do you have people on that do what you do? And I say, well, <laughs> yeah. because, you know, I'm in the business of trying to help people and I might not be the person that can help them, but I might know somebody that can help them. Exactly. (laughs) Right. And so that's, yeah. Yeah. There's lots of people out there that need help. So it's, you know, that's a a good attitude to have because we all sort of, we can all share. Right. Right. Because at the end of the day, we are just all looking to, you know, help people to feel better, to yeah. live their best lives and their longest and healthiest lives, you know, not being the one that's stuck sitting in the corner while the rest of the family has a fun time, you know? <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Having a good quality of life. <laughs> Qu- healthy, so health span, right? Instead yeah. of lifespan, it's health span. You want to live a long life right. as healthy as possible. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, Karen, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate your time. Well, thanks, Jen. It's been really fun talking to you. Yeah. And thank you for listening to the Fit News Podcast, and we will catch you next time.